Recycling News Live, and we have a gas pipeline in the Luhansk area that has exploded. This is being reported in Russian media, and uh, of course, uh, not a lot is being said as of right now. I know that it's going to be blamed on Russia, just such as uh, what uh, the very guy that originally commented on this, Mr. Bill Browder, uh, he was sitting there saying that it doesn't doesn't look like it takes a whole lot to uh, realize that uh, Putin orchestrated in 1999 a bombing of the apartment building in Russia and blamed it on the Chechens and started a brutal war against Chechnya, which got him elected president. Not hard to see the similarities of the supposed attack on a crucial oil pipeline to justify war with Ukraine. Now, the thing is, is I happen to know some people there in Washington directly know what's going on uh, with the situation in Ukraine and with Russia. And we know that, yes, there is a very real possibility of war uh, and a war that could come right to our doorsteps. But a lot of this has to do with all those illegal activities going on uh, by Joe Biden and his son, as we see in this video clip right here. And I'll play it again for you. I played it last night. I'll play it again. This is where he talks about cutting out that loan guarantee, boasting about it, right? And Listen up. I was up. supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had they were walking out to the president. State prosecutor said, no, was I'm going to uh, investigating the company his know. son was they involved said, in, no gas company. The president. the president said, I said, call him. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> you got fired. Nothing to check. And Nothing to check, huh? Nothing to check. Huh? Nothing to check. That's said, exactly right. Nothing to check. Yeah, there is a lot to check. So when I see a guy like Bill Browder over here saying that uh, Russia just orchestrates all this, and then you see over here, Joe Biden is making sure that the man that's investigating the company where his son uh, is getting some huge hefty kickbacks on one of these gas companies there. And knowing that all the kickbacks continue to go on, and this is part, and by the way, you guys, we don't get to see everything that's in the transcripts that happened between President Biden and President Putin at their last meeting where Putin would not even meet with him face to face. He was so angry about the way that, that Russia is being treated was sick and tired of having to make all these hefty payments that he knows it goes to Biden and his son. A lot of those revenues in the tunes of millions of dollars of kickbacks they're getting. And they want to brush us all up underneath the rug, right? And then you get this email scandal here where Hunter, and, uh, Hunter Biden is given an email uh, and they're talking about having to pay out cash and stuff like that for blackmailing and and all this kind of good old stuff here. And of course, the natural resources of Ukraine, all this is involved in it. And uh, the government by the general prosecutor, about ready to blow the lid off of all this. And then we wonder why we're about to go to war with Russia. Think about it, friends. Think about it. And now, suddenly, we have this gas pipeline up on going up in smoke in Luhansk. And of course, if it's in Luhansk, it's easy to blame it on the Russians, right? Well, just remember, they cross those lines all the time, the Ukrainians. Easily they could blow up that pipeline. Easily they could blow it up. Cause Russia more problems on top of it. Not to mention all the money they got to pay out. Now they got to go out and repair a pipeline, too, that's going across Ukraine. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Makes you wonder. Anyway, Putin tells Ukraine how to end Donbass war. The Russian president has called on Kiev to hold talks with the separatist leaders. Russian President Putin was warned that Ukraine must begin talks with the two breakaway regions in the country's war-torn east to put an end to the fierce fighting that has escalated in recent days. Speaking following talks with Belarusian leader Alexander uh, Lushenko on Friday, Putin said that Kiev needs to sit down with the representatives from the self-declared Donbass republics to secure a permanent ceasefire. The guarantee that peace can be restored comes with the implementation of the Minsk agreements. The Russian president said all Kiev needs to do is sit down and negotiate table with the representatives of the Donbass and agree on a political, military, economic, and humanitarian measures to end this conflict. The sooner this happens, the better, he states. 
Uh, listen, what's going to happen though, if things doesn't quiet down pretty soon, we're going to be in a world of mess, huge world of mess. And, and this is not going to be funny whatsoever there. All right, here we go. The other part I want to share with you, a report was received from Turkey that the Iranian intelligence service had planned to assassinate the Israeli businessman Yair Galer in the, in the retaliation of the assassination of Moshe uh, Fazer, uh, excuse me, Fakarizida Zeride, the architect of the Iranian nuclear program that the Turkish intelligence services thwarted the assassination attempt. According to the suspicion, the action was intended, among other things, to damage the warming relationship between Israel and Turkey, and according to the information obtained, Iranian intelligence tackled the business uh, and private life of Gilar, who lived in Istanbul. However, the Turkish field agents responsible for the counter espionage operations watched the Iranian assassination uh, sell step by step using passive surveillance methods. Following Turkish agents' surveillance in the Iranian cell, it became known that, there, that Iran was planning to gather information about Geller's whereabouts and then carry out the assassination through several Turkish citizens so as not to attract attention to get caught. After some time, according to the information provided by the Turkish intelligence, the Iranian staff's intelligence pers pursuit of Geller ended and the second phase of the preparations for the assassination began. At this point, the Turkish intelligence agency decided to share details with Mossad during a high-level secret meeting of the two intelligence agencies in Ankara, and it was estimated that the assassination was indeed planned to undermine relations between the two countries. Following the findings, Geller was taken into a hiding place with the approval of the Turkish intelligence agency, and Mossad agents actively defended Geller. Meanwhile, the Israeli foreign ministry invited Geller to live in Tel Aviv, in accordance with security protocols. However, Geller, who also holds Turkish citizenship, did not respond to the invitation, nothing that, uh, not, not noting that he loves Istanbul. So, I wanted to kind of share that with you there, and the reason I did is because, you know, I just shared with you guys yesterday how that the United States had offered Turkey uh, oil rights inside of Syria, and uh, I'd been told that by a friend of mine, uh, uh, that had sent that information to me was able to confirm that that indeed that deal was offered to the Turkish military in exchange for their cooperation in the event that we end up going to war with Russia. Well, it seems to me when I saw this news article here that was sent to me by a good friend over in, in Israel uh, that that's a, indeed exactly what's going on. They are definitely uh, taking up on that information. Of course, in this case here, it's not so much the United States and Turkey, but rather Israel which lets us know that those agreements are definitely being made and, uh, and, the, and the two are working closer together because Iran, of course, is more of a Russian partner there. But uh, things keep stepping up everywhere you look at. I'm Steve Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening and have a blessed evening.